Hey everyone, Corvus here and welcome to this little tutorial video in which I will show you how to achieve a paint chipping effect on a miniature or on a vehicle. I have two examples here. This is the more elaborate example, uh, this infinity figure. So a lot of fine scratches, a lot of work has gone into this painting this miniature. Uh, so this is more scratches. I used paintbrush a bit more on this figure than uh, than on the other one, but I will show you that in a minute how that works. So this is a Space Marines, obviously more of a gaming standard. So bigger patches of paint that that have uh, that came off, um, less scratches, so more 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 like patches. So this is obviously a bit quicker to do. So what I'm showing you these two examples is that you can really go from very detailed, lot of scratches to more rudimentary um, scratch effect with the same technique, which I'm going to show you right now. So I've prepared this little uh, piece on which we can, uh, on which I can show you the painting. So this is basically a, a hatch from a rhino, I think. So we just glued it on. So let's let's say this is a piece of rubble that we want to use as a maybe as a gaming piece or. A, uh, in diorama or a tabletop or just pretend that this is a part of a bigger vehicle so this allows me to demonstrate the technique on a small area so I already base coated this um, that's also very important to have a nice even base coat so two two coats of tint base coat it's um, the Avil and Sunset here but yeah you'll, you'll notice that on some colors the effect will work better than on, on others um, I think yellow is perfect color to uh, to demonstrate paint chipping effect so anyway nice base coat already did some basic shading and highlighting so that's very important that you get the shading and highlighting done uh, before you start weathering the figure uh, so apart from this what else will we need uh, so our base coat will use that paint we will need some kind of yeah dark red brown paint uh, this is one of my favorites burn cadmium red by Vallejo model color uh, but anything that looks a bit dark red a bit rusty that's uh, that's okay um, of course there's some black some white that's basically it we might pick up a bit of more orange color later on we'll see how it goes to demonstrate something um, and then we'll need a regular brush, this uh, Winsor & Newton Series 7 1 and then a very fine brush, this is a uh, Winsor & Newton Series 7 uh, 00 miniature, so very tiny brush and then a piece of blister foam uh, and then a sheet of white paper is also quite important, I'll show you later uh, how I will work with this and then of course the base, the other basics like a palette and uh, stuff you usually use, so let's get started So this is my palette. I will start making the mix here for the, the paint chips. So that will be our dark red. But we'll make it a bit darker even. So add some black. Something like this. Let's see what that will mix. Just add a tiny drop of water. Um, your paint doesn't have to be very thin but just always add a bit of water, never use paint right out of the bottle, just going to add a bit more I don't think this color is perfect, maybe a tiny bit of red I think that's it, okay so that's, so that's very important to have a nice dark um, dark reddish tone and then the second thing that's very important is the blister foam we will use this to paint on the paint chip so what you have to do is just tear off a bit of blister foam you can also use a pair of scissors for that just a small patch like this so that you can hold it like this so you can if you now dump this in, dunk this in the paint and start painting there will be way too much paint on this uh, and your miniature I mean the base coat of your miniature will be lost in all the scratches so we'll just uh, make sure that we hold it very well like this and then just put it in the paint and then already 
tap off some excess paint and then this where our uh, sheet of white paper comes in we'll just start tapping like this until most of the paint is gone so now if I gently push this down there's a small imprint here and that's what we're going to use to uh, to paint on the scratches now if you paint on scratches you can of course you can just put some scratches in the middle but you can also for example this is a hatch you can start thinking wait, wait where will most of the scratches go for example on uh, on the sides of a door uh, is there a handle somewhere a step those are areas uh, that can be scratched uh, more than other regions so I'll start gently moving this piece of blister foam along the edge here and then you'll already see that this small edge here has already a lot of uh, this reddish paint on there so I'm just going to go over this side again and also already going a bit more a bit further into the middle So that already looks quite okay. I'm just going to, because with all the talking, the paint has dried up a bit, so I'm just going to put a bit more um, on my blister foam here. And then now I'm trying to uh, put some larger paint chips in the middle here. So for that, you can really push down. Um, you can see here, you can really push down the blister foam to have, get some uh, some larger uh, paint. So this already looks quite okay I think. Now for the next step um, we take our mix again our basic mix just put the blister foam aside for now um, and then we can start having a look at all the, all the scratches. So I'm using a basic brush here and I'm just going over all the scratches on which I painted and I'm starting to judge look Maybe this can be a bit larger, so I just paint on some. So basically now, where there's a lot of scratching, there's sometimes some, some base coat left in between, and that's now something I'm going to remove by using uh, this regular brush. I'm just making some areas a bit larger. Normally I'll take a lot more time uh, for this, but I'm just going to some corners here and there to keep this tutorial as short as possible so this large patch here I'm just making it a bit larger this area as well it's also a nice patch to make a bit larger in this one so there's a lot more uh, of this reddish brown here on the model now made some areas a bit larger and now I'm going to take the very fine brush and that's basically the the difference between the the model on the left so the infinity figure and the more basic uh, space marine is that I can use this fine brush to to paint on some longer scratches like this so if I really want to See, like maybe some something exploded here or something. I can really start painting on the scratches like this, or make some of these larger, uh, larger areas. Make them appear a bit, a bit finer, or with some scratches along the edges like this. Or really paint on some bigger scratches. So just. Make on paint on some lines. It's also possible. Let's add a bit more here on the edges. So this really. Um, is the decisive point if you go if you're going for uh, some basic scratches or more intricate uh, patterns. So normally I spend a lot more time on this 
one more time and effort just keeping it basic for now so I hope you get the idea this is an, an, an optional an optional step which you can do but which I sometimes like is that you take your uh, let's say your, your scratch color so the reddish brown and then add something like the troll slayer orange or a bright uh, orange or even something a bit yellowy these on the palette so this will mostly be the red thin it down a bit or what you can also use for this is um, pigments if you have them so there are usually a, a lot of nice um, rusty colors in the pigments I'm not really entirely happy with this color but the purpose of this is just to get a brighter um, rust-like color which I can apply in the middle of the the larger scratches so again just going over the entire thing and judging for example this large patch I want to have some brighter rust color in the middle I'm just painting this on the on the large uh, areas Just be sure to always have a little edge of uh, <coughs> of scratch color on the outside, and just have this really in the middle of the of the scratch. So that gives it a bit more bit more color. And now to really really make this make this pop to give a really 3D effect, we're going to use uh, a mix of white with some of the base coat, and we will use that to paint on a, a small rich on the on the bottom of the of, the, of each scratch again this is somewhat optional you can uh, you can also use just have it like this um, or if you're going for a gaming model or something then you yeah, just paint this on on the because this is very very time consuming uh, paint this on the only on the larger uh, areas, on the larger scratches, or if you're really going for a high quality effect, just adding a bit more white here. Uh, yep, you can really paint it on every every scratch, even the smallest ones. So this has to be very bright. It has to really be off white. I think this is still a bit too dark. So it has to be rather thin because you really want to to control this on your brush so where's my small brush here it is so again we're going to use the miniature brush brush for this and then again going over the entire figure and really just this important uh, something I forgot to mention you just imagine that the light is coming from the top so from above so if the light comes from above and it hits a ridge just like we would do with uh, the little highlighting edge highlighting um, that ridge will be will be highlighted that edge so we're going to paint the white on the bottom of each scratch so I'm just going to demonstrate this here on the on the bigger scratch here in the middle in the middle And then of course the smaller, most of the smaller uh, scratches they they benefit from just a little dot of white, and some of them yeah they're really too small to to add something, so just leave them like that. I'm going to do this large one also. And then these on the sides. 
so it's, it's a bit chaotic uh, especially for gaming figures it's not really a problem that you make a mistake here and then but if you make a mistake they're, they're quite hard to fix I must admit but yeah just move your brush around a bit it's not that hard if you miss a spot or two so it's quite forgiving so just make sure if you're going for game basic quality gaming quality or something then just be sure that you have uh, have painted the white line along all of the larger areas if you really want to go all the way then yeah, you have to really every tiny spot you have to paint a white dot underneath it so if you're happy with this you can already stop stop here there's one last thing one additional step you can do which is completely optional and I think the effect uh, of that is very very minor just putting some uh, some black paint on the palette here slightly thinning it and then what you can do again totally optional but it's to uh, to enhance the 3D effect of the paint scratches. Is paint a tiny black ridge along the top. So I told you if the light is coming from above, then there will be a small uh, white line at the bottom. That's where the where the light will hit uh, the edge of the of the scratch. But on the other hand, there's also going to be a little shadow on top, and that's the thing I'm painting on right now. It's not really necessary, but um, if you really want to have a real 3D look, I think it really shows on the scratches here in the middle. It really makes it appear like a like a hole. It really adds to the 3D effect. But again, that's completely optional. Um, after this, but I'm not going to show you in this video. Uh, yeah, you can continue weathering, so you can use inks or uh, um, weathering paints. Um, should I say the spirit based oil paints to start painting us rust streaks and uh, other types of weathering but the basics of the scratch I covered in this video um, again here's the, the finished model so I hope this answers uh, all of your questions I know there were a lot of questions about this subject um, try to cover this in this small short uh, video um, so I hope this was helpful. If this was the case, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Bye.